Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this magnificent uh, conference for having me today. It's, it's a real honor and also a real pleasure to be uh, with you. Um, I prepared a presentation and I've been asked uh, to give you the, the legal framework that was already discussed this morning, but I will go into more detail and it is an introduction to the panel on posting of third country nationals. So what I'm going to do, I hope it will work, yes, what I'm going to do is first the context, but I will be brief because the context already has been uh, sketched uh, this morning. I will also say and repeat uh, what the uh, ELA's executive uh, uh, director said, that the posting rules apply to third country nationals, irrespective indeed of the nationality of the workers concerned. And then I will go in more detail into the case law, the famous case law of the Court of Justice. Uh, the speakers this morning referred to the Van der Rels judgment, but there are also other cases and judgment delivered by the Court of Justice on this item. And uh, yeah, they give an indication of what is the, the legal framework, but unfortunately there are remaining issues. There are still questions open. How to interpret and how to apply uh, this case law, and that, of course, gives rise to uh, uh, disputes, to legal disputes, to uh, administrative disputes. Uh, I will shortly refer to the implementation by the member states, but uh, ELA's executive director already mentioned uh, the report that was prepared for ELA, so I can be brief on that, and then I will end with some conclusions. So the context, uh, a growing number of third country nationals, a uh, number of them also under the radar. So I don't think we know exactly how many third country nationals are currently posted between the member states. Um, and we see also that the number of third country nationals posted between the member states is higher than the number in, in some member states, uh, higher than the number of third country nationals coming directly from a third country. So high, higher than the labor migration coming from third countries. Reports on vulnerability, reports on uh, poor labor conditions that was mentioned already this morning uh, due to the dependency on the employer because the employer has obtained a work permit, a residence permit in the sending member state, uh, language barriers, and some of these um, situations of vulnerability uh, came to the public debate in some member states, and these public debates are, of course, uh, an element in the uh, discussion. Now, um, as you know, it's part of the freedom to provide services, uh, and this is different from the free movement of workers, so third country nationals, and that's why this topic is so sp specific. Third country nationals do not have the right on their own to go from one member state to another. They uh, have, don't have the right to free movement, so only under the freedom of provision of services they can be posted from one member state to another. And from a legal point of view, this is uh, quite important. Only in some uh, categories or only some categories of third country nationals can move within member states once they have obtained a work permit in a member state. Uh, these are the persons covered by the ICT directive and the new uh, blue card directive. Uh, so that's the context. Now, the posting rules just apply irrespective of the nationality of the workers. The posting of workers directive does not refer to the nationality of the workers. The, it doesn't even refer to the residence of the workers. So posting pro of, of uh, workers directive of 1996 as amended in 2018 applies uh, in the case of posting of third country nationals. The same goes for the Social Security coordination under Regulation 883. Uh, it has been uh, extended to third country nationals uh, by a regulation in 2010. And the only requirement is there is a requirement not of nationality but of residence. And uh, only third country nationals with a legal residence in a member state can be posted to another member state. However, the Court of Justice in the Ballandin judgment said that residence should be interpreted broadly and it can be also temporary residence. So it should not be a, a, def, def, de, a, a residence of, a, of, of, of 
um, as main residence, residence as being the main place where you, ride, where you live. It can also be a temporary residence based on a visa. Uh, and of course, I should also uh, like to mention that uh, there is only posting if the substantial conditions for posting are fulfilled. Uh, under the posting of workers' directive, there is substantial activities to be done by the sending member state, by the sending companies, so no letterbox companies, and the posting is temporary. It, it, that, that are two conditions, main conditions, for the posting of workers' directive to be applicable. And of course, if these conditions are not fulfilled, then you don't have a valid posting. The same goes for Social Security. There are some conditions to be fulfilled, maximum 24 months, the organic bond between the employer and the worker should be maintained, no replacement. There is the role of the A1 documents. My message here is that uh, third country nationals are the posting of third country nationals should also comply with these basic conditions. And, are, and if these basic conditions are not fulfilled, then it is no posting. And since third country nationals do not have the right to free movement between member states as such, then maybe there is an instance of illegal migration. I will come back to that. Now, what is specific? So these rules you know, and that's not the topic of today. What is specific to third country nationals is that they make, or their employer make use of the right to freedom to provide services, um, and then uh, is it possible for also for third country national workers? Yes, the court has said in the famous Van der Rels judgment almost 30 years ago, huh? the famous Van der Rels judgment 30 years ago. Yes, of course. Uh, what was the case in Van der Rels? It was a Belgian employer called Van der Rels, and the company doesn't exist any longer. But it did some demolition works of one month in France. And Maybe the employer doesn't uh, uh, exist, but the client still exists. And that's why I'm showing you the uh, bottle of champagne, because the client was the famous Chateau Lanson uh, champagne company in Reims. And uh, this company was uh, founded in the 18th century. And I think they will continue to exist for the common centuries. Hopefully, they will continue to exist for the com common centuries. But Chateau Lançon had some work to do, and Van der Rels did it with his team, eight people, four Belgians, four Moroccans. Uh, and these Moroccans were habitually employed by the employer, Van der Rels. Van der Rels even had obtained a, a short-stay visa in France for the four Moroccan workers. But the French didn't agree, and the French social inspectorate fined Van der Rels for not having obtained prior to the work in France a uh, work permit. And it was this fine that was disputed before the courts in France, and the court in France finally then sent the, uh, uh, East, the case to the Court of Justice. Now, what was the uh, reply of the Court of Justice to the preliminary questions? Uh, the court said, requiring prior to the posting a work permit in France is an obstacle to the free movement of services, and this obstacle is not justified. And what is the reasoning the Court of Justice normally follows, and what every court should follow, also national courts, it's what is called the rule of reason. First, are there good reasons of public interest to take this measure? Secondly, is the measure proportionate? And thirdly, is the measure necessary? And the Court of Justice said, if you want to control uh, the immigration of third country nationals, uh, prior to the posting asking a work permit is not uh, justified. Why? Because, the Court said, these workers do not seek access to the labor market of the host member state. They are only posted there temporarily, and they return afterwards to the country uh, of uh, the sending member state or the country of uh, residence. So that is the basis. That's why we are talking today about posting of third country nationals, a ruling in a quite simple case, a romantic case huh, on, 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 on champagne, uh, more than of almost 30 years ago. Now, 10 years later, the court comple completed this uh, analysis or went on 
uh, the Commission was indeed uh, sending uh, member states to the court, if I may say so, because they didn't uh, comply with the principles, the ideas of the Van der Rels judgment. In the case against Luxembourg, Luxembourg required individual work permits, uh, depending on local employment uh, market. If there are sufficient unemployed in Luxembourg, the work permits were, were refused. Uh, Luxembourg issued also collective work permits, but the condition was previous employment of at least six months through a contract of indefinite duration with the sending employer. That was the condition to obtain a work permit, a collective work permit for a, a larger number of workers. And uh, on top of that, Luxembourg requested also a bank guarantee to cover the cost in the event of repatriation. Again, the court said, non accepted, uh, unjustified restriction, uh, this kind of uh, work permit to be obtained prior. However, it's interesting to read in more detail the uh, judgment. Uh, the court said, the host member state, however, may control and may ask some information. In the first place, the uh, host member state is unable to control if the purpose of the sending is really provision of temporary services and not making available these workers to the employment market of the host member state. So that's a yeah, not so easy distinction to be made, especially when it comes to temporary work agency, on what is temporary delivering a service and uh, making available the workers to the employment market of the host member state. Secondly, the court said that uh, host member states may control whether the situation of the workers in the sending member states is legal from the point of view of work. Do they have a work permit of residence? Do they have a residence permit or a visa there? And uh, regarding also social coverage. So this type of control can indeed be exercised. And thirdly, the court said in this case, in this judgment, uh, that the host member state may control that uh, the uh, third country nationals are carrying out the main activity in the sending member state. So this is a little bit yeah, more, de more details on how the court sees this uh, possibility within the framework of freedom to provide services, the possibility to post third country nationals. The host member state may control and may ask uh, some uh, information. Now, uh, the court went on in another case brought by the Commission uh, at this time against Germany, and Germany, of course, is, is, is uh, I would say, one of the usual suspects here. Uh, Germany required already in that time, so it's a judgment of 2006, uh, that's uh, a long time ago, uh, a visa prior to the posting, and the condition for obtaining the visa was at least a year's prior employment for the posting by the posting employer. The court said such a visa is, uh, a, in fact, a prior authorization, and a prior authorization goes against the freedom to provide services. Um, and, and, and it specified also the Van der Rels judgment, because in the Van der Rels judgment, the court has said, yes, but these workers uh, habitually are empl habitually employed by the uh, sending company. Uh, does it mean that then uh, a prior period of employment can be uh, requested, can be a condition for the posting? And in this Germ uh, case of, against Germany, the court said no, lawful and habitual employment in the sending state is not coupled with a requirement of residence or employment for a certain period of time. Otherwise, uh, it would not be possible to recruit uh, a third country national already part of the labor market of the sending member state to post this third country national immediately to a other member state. And uh, another judgment which is uh, confirming this case law is uh, a judgment against Austria, against Commission versus Austria, where Austria required an EU posting uh, confirmation uh, subject to having an employment of at least one year prior to the uh, posting. Um, and it's interesting also that in this case, Austria refused uh, to issue a entry or residence period 
uh, in the event of entry without a visa. And on visa, this judgment, the court was a little bit, yeah, was ambiguous. It said in, in one paragraph, and I cite the paragraph here on the slide, admittedly, said the court, there is no doubt that it's an off offense for a national of a non-member state to whom visa requirements apply normally to enter the member state without a visa. It's an offense, but if you read carefully the judgment, the message of the court was that even if at that time uh, Austria could have required for a visa, this visa should be uh, given and issued automatically, immediately, without any uh, extra conditions. That is the, the, the case law directly on posting of third country nationals. Uh, I must also mention a very confusing case law on the role of temporary work agencies. Temporary work agencies, yeah, are they really providing a service? They're not going to build uh, or to demolish like Van der Elst, uh, something in another member state. They make available workers to clients in another member state. And then the main question here is, do workers placed by such a temporary work agency enter the labor market of the host member state so that the latter, the host member state, may require work permits. And in cases on nationals of new member states, under the famous transitional periods for the freedom, to, freedom of movement of workers, and these transitional periods are not uh, now applied any longer, but uh, the members of the um, nationals of the new member state in the first six, seven years were not entitled to use the freedom to provide freedom of movement of workers on their own account, on their own initiative. The court said, yes, but these temporary work agencies, they intend to enable workers to, go, to gain access to the labor market of the host member state. And therefore, for these nationals of new member states, the old member states may require work permits when they are sent by temporary work agencies. That was Vico Plus and the Danieli case. But in other cases, a sent case, but also confirmed in the Danieli case, the court said, but this does not apply to third country nationals because third country nationals sent uh, under the heading of freedom to provide services, they do not gain access to the labor market. It's, it's, it's a pity uh, that the court was yeah, confusing on this point, and I think uh, sooner or later the court has to clarify its uh, case law. Now, what my role is today is also to, uh, yeah, to raise some remaining questions, uh, open questions that will be subject to the debate later in the panel. Um, questions on how do you interpret and how do you apply the, um, yeah, the condition that these third country nationals that are posted uh, are not seeking access to the labor market of the uh, host member state. What is the role of uh, temporary work agencies? What is the role also of intermediaries? Because the court said clearly, yes, they can be posted if it's about temporary delivering services, but not if it's about making them uh, entry, making them available as such to the labor market of the host member state. What does it mean if the court has said in one of the judgments that the third country nationals carry out their main activity in the sending member state? Is this always the case? Uh, does it in, indirectly uh, mean that they have to prove a residence or uh, employment prior, a certain duration of residence and employment, Prior to the sending, uh, we have instances of cases where third country nationals are recruited by a company in a member state and then almost immediately posted to uh, another member state. Do they still fulfill this requirement that you can find in the judgment that they carry out their main activity in the uh, sending member state? Uh, what if the workers do not return to the sending member state afterwards? Uh, has it an impact? Does it mean that then the posting is not valid? And how 
the host member state can control, and, and I understood from the introductory uh, speeches this morning that this is one of the main issues. The member states, the host member states say, but we are unable to control. The court has said we may control, for instance, the legality of the residence and the legality of the work permits in the uh, sending member state. Um, how can and how should this be controlled? We, meanwhile, we have the single permit. If the third country national has a single permit, that proves, of course, legal residence and legal employment in the sending member state. But not all third country nationals have a single permit, specifically some categories of third country nationals. Can they be posted? Students, for instance, students are entitled under an EU directive to work in the state where they are uh, allowed. Can they be posted? Seasonal workers, uh, au pairs, and then, of course, people under temporary protection. If you take the case law as it stands, these people are legally working and legally residing in a member state, and therefore they fulfill the conditions to be posted to another member state. And then the question, what about the visa requirements? Some member states, like Germany, they say, we just use this as a way to control. Is this acceptable or not? Questions. And of course, if the conditions of posting are not met, or if the social inspectorates of a member state, maybe rightly so, maybe wrongly so, consider that these conditions for posting are not met, then of course we have uh, an instance of illegal employment and illegal stay. Since third country nationals do not have the right to free movement on their own uh, from one member state to another, if the posting conditions are not met, then of course in the host member state these third country nationals are illegally employed and are illegally resident. And then of course we have a totally different legal framework that, that applies. I refer in my slide to the uh, uh, return directive and to the uh, sanction directive. And of course, how to guarantee the uh, protection of these workers, the employment and social protection of the workers, as guaranteed by the posting of workers directive and uh, guaranteed by the uh, social security coordination uh, regulation. One of the reasons why there is no, uh, there is so much discussion on how to implement it uh, is of course that there is no explicit legal instrument uh, like the posting of workers directive or another directive. The only legal base is here the treaty provision, which is of course a quite generally worded provision on the freedom to provide services, and the case law of the Court of Justice. So there is no, so to speak, black letter law. And therefore, I think uh, we will be confronted with new cases. And one of the cases now pending before the Court of Justice is a Dutch case. Um, a Dutch case on the requirements under Dutch law that uh, after the expiry of the Schengen uh, circulation rights, so 90 days out of 180 days, people with a Schengen visa have the right to travel within the Union. But if this period has expired, uh, the Netherlands ask a residence period. And a residence permit, I'm sorry, a residence permit which is valid for a short period of time, uh, maximum two years, and it may not exceed the validity of the work permit in the host member state. And the Dutch, they say, this is necessary to control. Yeah. On top of that, uh, you have to pay a fee, a quite high fee, to obtain this residence permit. And now the Dutch court asked the Court of Justice, is this in breach with the uh, treaty provisions? Um, yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to what the court is going to say here, uh, more than or almost 30 years after Van der Elst. I have two slides on the ELA report, but the executive director already uh, presented this, this ELA report, and, and I'm not going to repeat what he is saying. I think ELA can play an important role here uh, in, in, in identifying the issues, uh, in uh, uh, coming forward with, uh, with, with uh, information, with guidelines, uh, enhancing also the cooperation. So I fully support the, the initiatives taken by, by ELA. Um, but I would like also, um, and that's my last point, uh, to refer to uh, the issue, should we need legislative initiative? 
As I said, it's based on the treaty provision, general provision in the treaty. Uh, it's based on uh, case law. But should we need maybe a specific directive on third country nationals? Now I can just say that a long time ago, in 1999, uh, the Commission made a proposal, tabled a proposal, on the uh, uh, posting of third country nationals within the European Union. Uh, a, a, a proposal that uh, uh, set uh, introduction of, proposed an introduction of an EC service provision card uh, that should be uh, uh, delivered by the sending member state, confirming that the worker is legally working, legally residing, that he has his main employment in the member state, um, and that it's uh, of that was the Commission proposing, uh, with a uh, validity of a limited period of time, a quite limited period of time, for a maximum of 12 or so six months, depending on the duration of the prior occupation, the prior employment in the host member state before the posting. Uh, and the host member state said the proposal may not request uh, any visa or uh, work uh, permits. Uh, only a prior declaration can be asked. Now, this proposal the, uh, was not approved. Uh, it failed completely. Uh, the main reasons of the discussion was uh, the requirement of prior employment in the host member state, the maximum period, uh, the possibilities of the host member state to require resident per permit, the implementation on temp temporary protection, uh, on, on temporary work agencies and on asylum seekers, and on the obligation for the sending member state to readmit the posted workers. And because these negotiations in Council and between Council and Parliament completely failed, the Commission <laughs> has withdrawn its proposal in October 2004, and consequently the Commission launched these famous proceedings against Germany, Luxembourg and Austria uh, before the Court of Justice. The question is, should there be an initiative coming from the Commission come up with a new directive. It's uh, just an idea maybe uh, to be discussed. So, to conclude. I think that indeed it was clear uh, this morning that the posting of third country nationals is becoming more than uh, ever controversial uh, because it becomes the main labor migration avenue of third country nationals to the uh, member states. Um, it's facilitated by national law and international agreements concluding by the host member state. Um, and, yes, yeah, some say it is circumventing the uh, limitations on direct migration from third country nationals, and I refer to what is written in the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, that member states may determine themselves individually the volumes of admission of third country labor migrants. We have reports on vulnerability, um, and these reports on vulnerability uh, on, on, on some scandals also uh, in, in France, in Belgium, in other member states. The problem is, of course, that, that these are only, yeah, the, not the majority of the cases, but these cases undermine the credibility of the situations that are compliant, and that's, of course, uh, not, uh, not, not, not good. Uh, remaining problems, I mentioned them, and, and I'm ready to discuss uh, also in the panel. Uh, diverse, divergent policies of the member states that was highlighted in the ELA report, and the need for clarifications. Need for clarifications several ways. Guidelines, uh, clarifications of the case of the Court of Justice, probably new case law, at least in the one case, new case law of the Court of Justice, but should also the uh, political inst institutions uh, come in by uh, developing a specific uh, uh, legislation on the posting of third country nationals. Thank you very much.